Amen. Wonderful to be with you all. Do you ever take Jesus for granted and take his blessings for granted? I know I sometimes do. I imagine all of us do from time to time. And when we do that, we, we fail to be thankful, as we should, for Jesus. And when we are not grateful for Jesus, we do not honor Him. And when we don't honor Him, we don't honor the Father. So what I want to talk to us about this morning are reasons to be thankful for Jesus. Um, I made a list of the top ten reasons that I'm thankful for Jesus. I want to share these with us all so that we can maybe be a little bit more thankful for what Jesus has done so that we might honor Him and honor the Father. First reason that I'm thankful for Jesus is because He made me. In these last days, God has spoken to us in His Son, whom He appointed an heir of all things, through whom He also made the world. God created the world through Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ made us. I mean, we wouldn't be here. We, we wouldn't have life if it weren't for our Savior, if it weren't for Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for Jesus. Second reason that I'm thankful for Jesus is because He left heaven for me. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although He existed in the form of God, did not consider it robbery, that He might be equal with God, but He emptied Himself taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. That passage in Philippians 2 will always baffle me that our, our Savior spent an eternity with the Father in the glories of heaven and willingly chose to leave and come down here to this sin-cursed planet and be born as a human being and experience the full human existence while being fully human but fully divine at the same time. It's not like he lived a really great life from an earthly perspective either. He came to his own and his own received him not. He didn't even have anywhere to lay his head. And we know ultimately what happened to Jesus. I'm just so thankful that he was willing to give up heaven and come down here to earth because without that, none of the rest would be possible. Amen. He left heaven for me. I'm so thankful for Jesus. The third reason that I'm thankful for Jesus is because he died for me. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. You know, uh, you wouldn't think that God incarnate, that God in the flesh would even die, right? You would expect that God in the flesh would live here, you know, in total luxury in some ivory palace somewhere and... and uh, you know, maybe just be whisked off, you know, with chariots of fire like Elijah or something like that. But that's not what happened. He died. He went through what all of us have to go through, but he didn't just die. It's not like he just lived a, a long life and died of old age in, a, in his sleep. And it's not just that he just poured out a little bit of death, I mean, a little bit of blood at his death either. He suffered on the cross, the most painful and shameful and humiliating death possible. And he did that for me. I'm so thankful for Jesus. Fourth reason I'm thankful for Jesus is because he pursued me. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He sought me and found me. Like a shepherd who left the 99 sheep to find the one that had gone astray, he, he, he found me through the providence of God in my life and through the teaching of the gospel that my parents uh, blessed me with, Jesus revealed himself to me. He re revealed his will to me in the pages of, of the Bible. And I'm just so thankful that he sought me because I never would have found him and I would have been lost forever. I'm so thankful for Jesus. Fifth reason I'm thankful for Jesus is because, well, he saved me. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, please. I just love this passage. In 1 Timothy 1, beginning in verse 12. Listen to what Paul has to say. 1 Timothy 1, beginning in verse 12, Paul says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, 
who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, putting me into service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor. Yet I was shown mercy because, he act, because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. It is a trustworthy statement. Look at this verse. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. I can relate to Paul. I just feel like the foremost of sinners. I cringe at the things I've done. I've been so wicked. I've been so sinful. I, I, I cringe at the past life that I used to live in, even some of the things that I, that I still do. I'm so unworthy. I don't deserve forgiveness for what, this massive debt of sin that I've incurred against the Lord. I could never pay that off. But the Lord will erase that from, from my debt ledger. He will forgive my trespasses, even though I completely don't deserve that. I am eternally thankful for Jesus. Sixth reason that I'm thankful for Jesus is because He put me into service. Verse 12 of this same chapter that we just read, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me, Paul says, because He considered me faithful, putting me into service. Paul is saying, not only was I saved, but I was put to work. Christ thought that I could be used. He thought I was still useful after all the horrible things I had done. I thought I was useless, for, but he thought I was useful for him. You ever feel that way? You, you know, after all that we've done, how could God possibly use me? But he can use me. And how grateful I am that he's put me into service. I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to stand and preach and to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ in various places. I'm so thankful for that. It's an honor. It's a privilege. You may not preach, but all of us have been called to service, to serve like our Lord served. In whatever capacity and whatever talent that the Lord has given you to use, whatever your function is in the body of Christ, we all work as one together. Realize that whatever He gave us it is a blessing that He called us to service. We should be thankful. We shouldn't Dread, oh, I've got to do more work. No, we should be thankful for the opportunity that he would think we are worth being used for him. And we want to be used. I want to be used. I'm so thankful for Jesus. Seventh reason that I'm thankful for Jesus is he continues to forgive me. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 1 John 1 7, which says, But if we walk in the light, as He Himself is in the light, the blood of Jesus, His Son, uh, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. You know, that describes the Christian walk. As, as we serve God and serve Jesus in this life, we are walking in the light, walking in the light of the revelation of God's Word. Once in a while, more often than we'd like, we slip and fall when we sin. And in that moment... We have a choice to make. Are we going to get up and keep walking in the light? Or are we going to turn and start walking in the darkness? And we have a choice to make. Are we going to repent? Are we going to turn from sin and let the Lord help us up and ask for forgiveness and keep walking in the light? Or are we not? But what is so wonderful is that not only when we were baptized in the Lord, were all of our past sins forgiven. But we have now been given the opportunity that non-Christians don't have. Of course, they don't have that one until they become Christians. But another thing they don't have is whenever we do sin, every single time, we can turn to the Lord, we can repent of what we've done, and He can say, I forgive you. And we can, that can happen over and over. His forgiveness will never run out. I'm thankful for that because I sin every day. We all sin every day. I'm so thankful. For Jesus. The eighth reason that I'm thankful for Jesus is because He strengthens me. Most famous verse on this, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have a prayer that I've written down uh, that contains all of my different goals of what I want to become, of what God wants me to be. 
I wrote it years ago, and I try to read it every day as part of my prayer habit. Very end of my prayer, I, I say to God, uh, help me to be better today than I was yesterday and to never reach my peak. And then I affirm the promise of that passage in Philippians 4. I affirm it to God at the very end of my prayer every day. And I tell Him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I believe that. I believe that. And it motivates me. And it reminds me. All of these things I'm praying for, all these things I want to become, and I fall short so often, I wouldn't be able to do that at all. I wouldn't be able to face the challenges of being a Christian and overcome the challenges and pick myself back up after I've fallen. I wouldn't be able to do any of that were it not for the strength that Christ provides. And that's the kind of strength Paul's talking about in that passage. It's being able to keep going when, when you've fallen and when you've failed and when things are hard and difficult. But He strengthens me. And I feel that. I know that without Him... I don't have the ability. I am inadequate in and of myself. I I cannot face those challenges. I cannot do the things He has called me to do. But with His strength, I can do all of it. And we all can do all of it. Because of Christ our Lord. I'm so thankful for Jesus. The ninth reason that I'm thankful for Jesus. I think I should have made a ten-part series out of this. Is He gives me hope. I love Colossians 3 and verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then we also will be revealed with Him in glory. Christ, who is our life. Paul says in Philippians 1, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So to live is Christ, and Christ is life. You put those two passages together. Christ is everything. Like, literally, everything. I mean, what would my life be without Jesus? Where would I be? I would be deep in sin, and I would be suffering the terrible consequences of sin on a daily basis. My life would be a wreck. I would have no direction. I wouldn't know what's right and wrong. I wouldn't know how to live. I would have no hope beyond this earth. Life would just be a miserable series of solving one problem after another. That's what life would be. And maybe I might be able to accomplish something on, on this you know, planet that is hanging in outer space. There's got to be more than that. And because of Jesus, I have purpose, I have direction, I have meaning, and I have hope beyond this life. No matter what I accomplish or don't accomplish, I have hope of heaven. I have hope that one day the Lord is going to be revealed from heaven, and that my body is going to be transformed into you know, conformity with His glorious body. And I'm going to be caught up together with Him in the clouds, and I'll be with the Lord forever. I, I believe that. And it infuses my life with hope. I'm so thankful for Jesus. Tenth and final reason that I want to mention here of why I'm thankful for Jesus is because He will always love me. Romans chapter 8. Let's turn our Bibles, please. Romans chapter 8. Preacher, years ago when I was learning how to preach, told me, always say please when you tell people to turn their Bibles because it sounds polite. So I try to do that. Uh, Romans 8, beginning in verse 35. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered, but in all these things. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And then he goes on to talk about the love of Jehovah toward us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's hard to imagine, it's really hard to wrap your mind around an unconditional love. A love that there, there, there is no external force that can remove that. I, 
It's hard to find that on earth, isn't it? But we have that in our Savior. And I'm so thankful. So these are 10 reasons. I could have listed 110. Could have listed 1,010 for that matter. But these are just 10. And I hope it's enough to inspire us to be just a little bit more thankful for what Jesus has done so that we may honor Him and thereby bring honor to our Heavenly Father. This morning, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, there's no better opportunity to let our hearts be filled with the utmost gratitude for what our Savior has done for us.